August is Overdose Awareness Month. And as an addict in recovery, overdose is something that has greatly impacted my life. lost several friends to overdoses and although I've never overdosed on opiates I have overdosed on medication as a failed attempt at suicide so I have the experience of having survived an overdose and I have to say that the gravity of it didn't hit me for a really long time and I didn't realize just how lucky I was to have escaped that death because I was told it would have been an awful, awful death the way I had gone. So overdose is both something that I've personally experienced and been to many funerals as a result of. So even though I am sober and I have been sober for a few years, I still deal with this in my daily life. I actually went to a memorial service for a peer, I guess you could say, who overdosed like two weeks ago. And that was probably the only one I was personally related to, but a bunch of my friends went to one yesterday, literally a week later. So it happens a lot. That's why I think that at a certain point in recovery, the hardest part of recovery is losing your friends. My first couple years really sucked for a myriad of reasons. First of all, my mental health plummeted when I got sober and I went psychotic and I was suicidal. And in the almost four years I've been sober, nine of my loved ones have died. But by far, the hardest thing I struggle with today is the grief in the community whenever one of us dies and all of us supporting each other through it. But at the same time, like my friends are dropping like flies. This is a thing that keeps happening and doesn't stop happening. Overdose has skyrocketed, skyrocketed. And I remember for International Overdose Awareness Day in 2019, I got a hoodie, a hoodie that said something like 189 a day, which was how many people died on average in a day from overdose in America. So it's four years later, and I don't know what the statistic is this year, but last year it was in the 300s. So it had pretty much like tripled in three years. I'm bad at math, but you get what I'm saying. So that's why I think that this has become the hardest part of my sobriety now that I've been sober a little while and I've recovered a lot of things in my life. I got over the hard part of getting sober and I've been staying sober pretty well and like I said I'm stable now. My friends however, I really worry when they go back out. Like I, I've had three friends that I'm close with who have been in and out and in and out for years and it's very stressful to me because I miss them and I just want them to be okay. And I don't know if they're gonna make it. I don't know if my friends will be alive next month. You know what I mean? Like, like I worry so much because these are people who mean so much to me, who are bright, intelligent, amazing individuals with huge hearts. And right now they've lost all of the things they had when I met them, their houses, their kids, their cars. And I just want that for them. I want them to get that back. And I'm not gonna be the one who can make them do it only they can make them do it. It's incredibly scary thinking that either someday they're gonna come back and I'll have my friend again, or I'll see them at their funeral. The stuff going around out there is so potent and deadly. And it's not always fentanyl. Like, like this, this is oftentimes stuff that's crafted in someone's kitchen that's dyed blue to look like fentanyl. And I've heard from one of my fiance's coworkers who is at this uh, men's treatment center um, that a lot of the people they have coming into their treatment center might not be addicted to opiates, 
but their drug tests are showing that the stuff they were using that they thought was pure is laced with fentanyl. So people who have no intention of doing fentanyl are hooked on fentanyl. More and more people are coming into the rooms of the 12 step programs I attend saying that their drug of choice is fentanyl, not heroin, not meth, fentanyl. When I started out on my recovery journey as a teenager, fentanyl wasn't even talked about. And mind you, this was barely over 10 years ago. Now people prefer it to anything else and people are selling that more than anything. You, it's, it's not as easy to find heroin as it is to find fentanyl. It's a really scary time to be an addict and I am so grateful that I got sober when I did at the state that I did, that I did not go to the length of trying fentanyl. Um, it's, it's one of these things that it's, it's like massacring people. It's, it's, it's like the AIDS epidemic, but like on steroids. And you know, I don't know the numbers of the AIDS epidemic, but like that wiped out a massive community. Well, our massive community is equally being wiped out. I hope to God that my friends come around and that they get this and that they get their lives back together. They get the beautiful life they deserve. Um, it's, yeah, it's one of those things I'm, I'm powerless over others and I'm powerless over the consequences of my friends' lives. So yeah, this is the hardest part for me right now. Um, everything else in my life is coming together. I just wanted to come together for my friends and not knowing the certainty of their lives, it's, I gotta say, it's weighing on me and I worry about them, I do. Um, I care a great deal about them and I just feel like that's my obstacle right now, um, especially given the memorial I went to just two weeks ago. I would love to see this end and I don't think it will, um, but the least I can do is at least talk about it, open a conversation, spread awareness, and honor the people, both who have relapsed, that I want to come back, and the ones I've lost, because there are many. It's Overdose Awareness Month, and I just feel compelled to say something because this is a conversation that needs to be had. And if you think overdose doesn't affect you, you're not paying attention, because I guarantee you, it will impact you. Just stick around long enough to see the world change, and it will affect you. Thank you.